You can see the Corinthian columns, Greek influence. And we are going down to the Petra. <laughs> this is the Byzantine church. Wow, let's check one of this. This beautiful view, what is known as the treasury. Okay, I'm here guys. It's the monastery. And you can see some caves, man-made. Not just there, also on this side. You can even see stairs and fortification. That one. But maybe it's new. I don't know. So, back to the monastery. It is the largest, the tallest building in Petra. It's a bit further from the main city, which is below. So it's quite high up. And we'll see if we get closer. Wow, it's really big seeing up close, 50 meters high. Wow. Wow, you can see the Corinthian columns. Greek influence, Hellenistic. The urn. And I heard it's called monastery because there is a, you know, it was turned into a monastery in the past. There is a cross inside. I don't know where they can go in. Let's check. Now I'm gonna get closer. So this is like from first century BC. And you can see it's come from the mountain all the way here. Kaf 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 kaf. It's like that. Corinthian columns. The urn up there. So it looks like there is a room, but there is not. It's only the only entrance is this one. You can see the column is bigger than a person. And it says no entry, but I think you can get a glimpse of the inside. I heard uh, there is a carving of a cross inside because it was used once as a monastery but I don't see any cross so that might not be true Wow, my voice Hello Yeah, echoes the entry So that's it, we are not sure what it's made for, even the archaeologists also not sure. I don't think there was any inscription, unfortunately. And the remains is still uh, very, very much preserved, which is really cool. I really like it. You should come to Petra and go to the monastery. Almost 50 meters high, I think it's 48 meters. Unfortunately, we cannot go up. And later we go down and see the city of Petra. We love tombs, the treasury, temples, and others. Let's go. So up here at the monastery, uh, there is cafe. You can buy uh, some beverages, drinks, and I want to climb up there because you can see uh, a kind of amphitheater. So I'm already near the top here, and uh, you can see some carving inside with donkeys. But the great view from here is actually over there, the monastery from the top. And you can see something that looks like an amphitheater, but I think it's not. More like, you know, a place for gathering there. Wow, see the monastery. And right behind me, that is uh, Wadi Musa. You can see it from here. Nice. Okay, let's continue. Let's go down and visit the center of Petra. So we are going down to the Petra and as you can see a lot of the souvenir shops here are closed because even though it's November, usually peak season because of the good weather Unfortunately because of the conflict in Gaza and Israel right now, not many people come here because many people who come to Jordan to visit Petra usually come via Aqaba but even then the up airport is closed because of the you know because of the missiles from Yemen and just like few days ago the, the airport is closed and not many people come here to Petra but still some people are still you know this their work so they need to get some money they're still open their shops 
because there are still some tourists. Should I buy some too? I don't know, thank you. With camels. And uh, yeah, now it's just going down all the way. We came from there, from the monastery, it's all the way up and here it's quite level already and around here you can see there are a lot of uh, holes in the wall, in the cliffs, it's like for maybe housing and the past probably it's like to welcome people who wants to climb up to the monastery, there are a lot you can see, wow. I will show you just one of the hole, uh, chamber. Well, even old steps looks like this wow. it's really big yes but no decoration inside okay let's continue we have entered the main area like in the past you can still see a lot of rooms up there even you know up there i don't know how people in the past go there perhaps they have like maybe wooden ladders you can see here up there wow and this is a cafe a restaurant and we're already here we're gonna go to another important site other than the other than the monastery it is the i think the only large standing temple in petra you can still see like after 2000 years old it's still standing very high more than 20 meters that one there and here there are a lot of restaurants this is number 10 restaurant i checked the price food is around uh, four to six jd for sandwiches and the drink is from one to two jds Jordanian dinners and in front of me right now is Qasar Albin it's the most important most important uh, temple in Petra I'll show you the front is that one it's really high there wow really nice right and over there is the great temple colonnaded road and uh, Tomb of the Kings. So let's check one by one from this one. Qasar Albin is unique as one of the only few uh, lone standing structure here, not cut from the cliffs, but it's really constructed. You can see the columns are still there. And I'll just read from the explanation here. Remember, I got a brochure, so I just can uh, speak from here. It was the main and most important temple of Petra dedicated to Dusara. The temple is approached by 26 marble steps, which is that one. Now it still stands 23 meters today. And let's go to the next one. I want to check Casa Albint from behind, so no backlight. And I'm entering the temple from the side, and you can see the stone here is really gigantic this one wow can you imagine that's like 2000 years ago and there are also columns you can see that it's cylindrical for example like this one this one here and the temple is right uh, on my right you can see some carvings Perhaps from the stone, it's a red stone. That's why in the past, Petra is also known as a uh, red rose city. And you can see the top. Still, uh, there is like a flower. And see this one also. Yeah, it's really great. 
uh, from behind. Apparently, not much to see. Yeah. And the cliff. I think it's a dwelling place. Okay. Maybe there used to be a door there because I can see, you know, semicircle. Anyway, let's go to the great temple over there. So my sister wanna try the camel. Let's see. Basically the camel bow down, you know. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. Very big camel. So tall. I think it's two meters tall. Maybe more. Wait, wait. I would take the picture. Okay, I'll take the picture. So we're entering the gate. My sister will go first. And on the right is the great temple. It's very big complex and you cannot appreciate its majesty from this close. Perhaps you need to climb a hill, maybe from there. Then you can see the magnificence of the temple. Oh, Brown University excavation. Oh, see, donkeys. Hi. Okay, this is a temple. Wow, it's really big. You can see the columns becomes like this. So it seems like you know it's like cylindrical stone put on top of one another. So you can see perhaps it's like that. Or like this. And it's I guess maybe plastered, I don't know. But that's the columns. And here I wanna show you something. Is Exedra and here uh, I think there are some carvings maybe of the ancient gods of the Nabataeans but not much was left it has been defaced but you can still see the hand the hair the bust yep and someone wearing a a horn, I guess. Okay. Really nice. Let's check the top. Here you can see the broken pillars. Wow. A massive pillar. Like this one. Amazing. Yep. Probably the main sanctuary at the back. Theatron. It looks like a theater. And there's an underground chamber. Wow. Very nice. Let's try to climb. Probably this already. We start. Really nice. And I want to show you this the top of the columns, the capital. So, the carvings, the flowers. And probably there is a tomb or something over there. And yes, this is it. Wow. I reached the very back of the Grand Temple and as you can see here I don't know what this maybe sacrificial pit or something and there is a kind of small theater up there and behind me now you can appreciate the cliff dwelling over there and right here something interesting 
at the end of the temple I can see some colors still there let me show you over there yep. see also the canal 2000 years ago I think to protect the temple uh, it goes so deep uh, wow don't know to where I don't know maybe it's connected underground to this room maybe to manage water I'm not sure but this one is locked okay there are more tombs up there see but first I'm gonna go towards the tombs of the kings now I'm walking to the colonnaded street there are a lot of pillars here colonnade and people say in the past this might be a market and now souvenir shops so a bit similar in a sense and behind that probably the market and you have stairs also I don't know maybe it's still part of the temple actually and our destination now is that one well first I should have shown you the map basically we are from monastery here at the year and down 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 this is the Qasr Abint and we are here just now you're passing to the great temple oh it was garden and pool complex market and there's a Byzantine church so rather than going to the uh, palace tomb I think I want to check the Byzantine church which is turn left here it says Byzantine church because they said you can see a mosaic ancient mosaic from the Byzantine era I think it's from the 5th century so long after Petra diminished from world history let's climb up it's that one I think this is the Byzantine church let's see wow I don't know this one looks still from the Nabataeans but I heard like the church also make use of the ancient remains so maybe they move it here I don't know and here we can see oh wow I think water storage and it's really deep and big and I think this is the church let's see if you can see the mosaics which is well preserved yeah it's this one also uh, Petra Papiri was found here 140 papyrus scroll anyway this is the mosaic with human and animals horse maybe duck rabbit oh very cool pig so animals flanking like guts symbolizing seasons I heard see with oars nice and take a look at that wow amazing mosaics and the marble there you still can see crosses so that's the Byzantine church and like I said before like a papyr papyrus 140 were found here and it deals with day-to-day uh, -day transaction and the central figure is actually a deacon uh, by the name of Theo Theoronos, son of, of Obodianus. Obodianus is actually a Nabatian name. It's the name of royal uh, of the royal family here, which is start from Obodas, the king of the Nabataeans. So perhaps they actually in the end converted to Christianity, and the language used is Arabic, which is actually quite interesting. So Arabic Christianity here in the uh, fifth century before the Islamic conquest. So it's a very interesting found uh, finding the Petra papyrus 
Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna go to the finally. Yeah, <laughs> I keep saying we're gonna go there. Let's go to the royal tombs. See some ancient buildings there. Anyway. We are here at the palace tomb, finally. So it's the tomb of uh, ancient Nabatean kings from 1st century BC. And actually that's towards the east. There are several more tombs and there used to be a ancient wall of Petra. So in the past actually the main entrance is from the east, it's a wadi. But right now the entrance is from here. Um, anyway, I'm gonna show you the palace so the palace here the palace here have four main chambers as you can see and it's really tall perhaps it's even taller but maybe broken in the past and you can see the main chamber over there yep let's see the inside seems to be connected within a chamber the details are already broken by erosion and on top of that looks like a cave so maybe there is a small chamber, hidden chamber over there I'm not sure but this is really amazing and I don't know whether we can actually enter from inside because you know it seems to be a a little bit higher than the eye level here there is hidden chamber Wow, it's very big, but it's not connected to anywhere, and maybe it's just a storage room. Yep, that's it. And I'm gonna show you the next one. If this one is the palace tomb because it looks like a palace, the next one is called a Corinthian tomb because the style is uh, looks very Greek. Corinthians, Corinthian columns, and it's very similar the, to the treasury. We'll see treasury later. This one. Oh, I think for this one we might be able to enter. Let's let's go. You can see some people up there. This one. Do not enter. Do not climb. Here. See. Not much left. Wow. Let's take a look. <coughs> See, so. You're okay. welcome. Ah, uh, yeah. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Drink tea. Drink tea. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. I'm in a hurry. Thank you. So, okay. Let's go back. Uh, say goodbye to this. Cool place, very cool. Now it's a place to drink tea. Interesting, eh? And we're gonna go on the next one. Follow me. So besides the tomb of the king, a lot of chambers. Now it's a place to. It's a stable. <laughs> Another one here. Let's take a look. Wow. I wonder like how many years do they spend to carve this? Okay. See, a, a lot of tombs. And it's all already eroded. Okay, let's go there. So it's really unfortunate, like in the past, they are used for tombs of royal kings, royal family. And now when I entered, the smell of peace. Okay, we're not gonna enter everything. Let's just go. This one made of stones. So combination, not just carvings. Yes. I'm not sure if these uh, stairs 
uh, old or new. Wow. Let's check one of these. So it's a combination connected between stone made and this. Wow. Okay. So this part is more intricate because you know it's connected between the walls and the cliff. And now I'm out. Whew. Need to be careful. See, like this one. Very strange. Leads to nowhere. So the stones actually function more as a stairs and archway. The tomb is up there. Well, I'm not going there. See, still a lot of chambers. Okay, let's go. Uh, it's already three, like in two hours. I need to go back and find uh, the bus. Our bus to Amman is at 5 p.m. And I'm gonna still visit the treasury. The ancient stairway cut from the rock. And this one probably new. Wow. So from the tomb of the kings, the necropolis over here, you can see the whole city of Petra. From there, you can see the temple right there and the east wall in the past. So definitely, if you compare this place Petra with Hegra, I think Hegra is much more preserved. Except here, maybe if you compare to the uh, monastery, the others look, you see, all eroded. Hegra is better. But in Hegra, not many tombs. Well, there are 100 plus, and they're unique because of the stone. Okay, let's go there. Hopefully, there's a way here. No way down. I need to go back. Okay, let's just go back to the treasury now. Ooh. See? Carp here. Probably for washing or something. Now, I'm gonna leave the city of Petra. We are going there to the exit, to the treasury. And one thing I wanna say is about, you see? Almost nothing green remains. So how could this be a big city in the past? And that's what we're gonna find out. Uh, how the Nabataeans in the past actually uh, were very, very uh, masterful in managing water resources. It's just that in the year of 360 something, uh, because of a massive earthquake, the irrigation system was uh, destroyed and not functioning optimally. And since then, the city has diminished and forgotten in history. We are nearing the exit. This is a canyon. And on my right, right here, is a Nabatian theater. It looks like a Roman theater. In fact, uh, they say it can have 4,000 people sitting on this theater. Amazing, right? And there are even more tombs up there. Wow. Okay, let's go. This water canal, even though it has been restored, but before there was a water canal here built by the Nabataeans. They actually managed to use the water, they divert the water from Wadi Musa all the way here to water the whole city of Petra. But as you can see now, it's very dry. And here, a lot more tombs. Amazing, eh? Take a look at this one. 
outside the carving is already well made but there is no chamber so that's probably how it was done in the past you craft the outside first and this one probably not finished that's my guess but it's quite cool yeah <laughs> really nice and that one a very big there's chamber there nice this is the canyon and besides the river small river here there's also a canal here that they dug at the side of the cliff this is how they actually managed to get water and you know I think they put some water here somewhere there it's all the way towards uh, Wadi Musa you can see it's dark it's not natural now I'm entering one of the main attractions in Petra so other than the monastery the most famous is you know the treasury and you can climb to get a good picture like from there 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 also so you can take a good picture of this treasury right here this one is very very preserved you can still see even you know some of the guts carved on the wall amazing yeah I show you the guts it's that one and the urn the middle one here you can see a lot of bullet holes because in the past many uh, Bedouins Arabs and others they think that there is a treasure there that's why it's called the treasury treasury of Pharaoh that's according to uh, local agents like when Pharaoh actually chased after Moses he actually managed to be safe and cross the Red Sea and he actually hit the treasures here that's according to folklore but according to history this one probably is a tomb not a treasury a tomb of I think Avetas the fourth king of the Nabataeans yeah the carving is really great for example here I think I can see carving of a person with a horse amazing let's take some pictures I went into the souk and walked back to give you the experience of if you actually come from the main entrance from there and so you walk uh, in this canyon and suddenly after you walk for like two kilometers suddenly you find this beautiful view what is known as the treasury Yep, that's it. Again, no entrance, it's barred. But as you can see, I don't know why, but if you pray, it seems like you're allowed. Anyway, one more. You can see other than the guts, I think you can see angels there. There, one and two. Nice. So that's Petra, I'm gonna go back and maybe check the museum if we have time. So goodbye Petra, we're gonna go to this uh, narrow canyon, also known as the Souk. And later there is kind of a gate, see the water canal on both sides. So this one, the water from Wadi Musa all the way to Petra. But as you can see right now, there is no water. I think it's been a long time since there was water running through here because it's already broken. See? See? But you still can see the remains from 2000 years ago. Imagine that water used to flow here. We just came out from the sick or the narrow canyon. Here. 
So they say it, it's it's free if you have the ticket, German pass. So let's just take this to the visitor center. So apparently the horse is free, but the guy helps me to walk to the entrance and he asks, you know, tips from your heart. So actually you can pay uh, however much you, you want, but I feel bad because I don't have much money to begin with. I'm not gonna give any tips, so I said just uh, let me down and I just walk. But if you have money, I think you can just pay one JD because it's already late in the afternoon and people are going back. Let's go. Near the entrance, you can find another tomb, quite unique because you can see four pyramids on top, and there is a, I think a statue of a goddess or something, and that's the tomb, and that's the entrance. Oh, there's actually a live show free of charge, but I don't know when. Anyway. Let's go to the museum. Now it's already 4 p.m. In one hour, we need to take the bus, and we still to take, we still need to take our uh, backpack from the hotel. We are back at the visitor center, so it, it takes you 20 minutes to reach here from the treasury. Walking fast. Okay, so the museum. I think it's in front. This is Petra Museum. So I heard, I read a review that if you have time, just visit this at least maybe for 10 or 20 minutes so you get a feel of what actually was found inside Petra. So let's be quick. It's actually funded by Japan and it's not big. Let's just see. Dusara. Ah, this is the god. Petra Temenos Gate. So actually you have this. Wow. Imagine 2000 years ago. From the Neolithic age all the way to Edom. Moab Amon King's Highway through Petra. Wow. So this all actually found in Petra. You can see the head. Elephant is a capital. Capital is like this, the top of a column. And the gods, wow. Wow, Medusa. Wow. Angels. Wow. 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 Amazing. Harpies or Sphinx, it says. This one is the famous face with lioness handles found in the Byzantine church that we visited earlier, which has mosaics. Wow. And other findings. Greek gods. Aphrodite. Well, that's the museum. Let's go to the hotel and take our luggage and go. Okay, so I'm bringing two bags here. Because my sister is still on the way and the bus is like in 20 minutes. So we're meeting at the bus terminal. This is the terminal besides Petra Museum. I think this is the bus, Jet 10 JD to Aman from here. Let's go. This is the bus, let's see how good it is. Let's go. Oh, it's so crowded. Okay, number two and four. I think it's this one. So we got the front seat. See, it's a big bus, almost full. And let's see. Let's go, Wadi Musa and Aman. Ikuti terus Bang Jago, sampai jumpa.